You're listening to Papa Radigan Jams for Radigan of Gambia. 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 Yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon, Gambia. Welcome to another edition of the Njaisen Jams Capital Reggae Jam, which comes on your way every Saturday from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. We've given you good reggae music for the best part of the first hour. And, you know, the second hour, as we sometimes do in this program, we do have some guests. And this afternoon is no exception. I've got an important and extraordinary guest a surprise one for that matter a huge figure in the reggae music industry somebody who is considered to be a leading figure a producer the, uh, one of the people the engineers who revolutionized uh, dub music to digital age and he is no other than uh, Neil uh, Joseph Stephen Fraser he's called Mad Professor you all know him so Mr. Professor welcome to the capital Reggae Jam good afternoon to you yes good afternoon Papa Jay good afternoon great to be here man yes man Mad Professor as I said is a huge figure can you just uh, give us a brief uh, rundown of yourself a brief one <laughs> That's always difficult because you're within yourself, so it's not easy to <coughs> describe yourself like how someone else would. You know? mm-hmm. But basically, I, I run a label called Ariwa, mm-hmm. and um, we're based in London. Mm-hmm. It was started in 1979, mm-hmm. and um, we produce a lot of people, maybe... 70% of the UK artists pass through Arriva, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And we've done quite a few Jamaican artists, you know? Mm-hmm. We've done people like Uroy, Horace Andy, Lee Perry, mm-hmm. Bob Andy, you know? Um, in England, we like Sandra Cross, Maccabee, mm-hmm. Pato Banton, Kofi, uh, you know, loads, Luciano, you know, every, you know, you know a lot of, lot, of, lot of artists, you know? Okay. Ariwa Records, a mad professor with the Ariwa Records. I understand it started, you started in your living room from four track machine to eight track to 16 track, and yeah. eventually be, uh, it became the uh, the biggest uh, <laughs> black owned studio, uh, you know, in London. How was it like? Well, it wasn't easy, you know, because when we start, for a start, um, you know, in those times it wasn't easy to have a studio. It's not like now where you have like a computer and all this and everything just in one little corner. Mm-hmm. At that time you needed a big machine, like on tape. Mm-hmm. And you needed to have like um, a big mixing desk. Everything was big. Everything mm-hmm. was real. Real piano, real everything. Mm-hmm. And if and if and if you don't have it real, you you can't and, and the money you need. You need the money you need a space, you know, <laughs> and um, and um, <laughs> and, um it yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we really took a lot of it. You know, it took a lot of money to really um, get it get it together. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money because. <laughs> You know, we were just ordinary people. I just had this idea mm-hmm. before I was an electronic technician. So mm-hmm. I was able to build my own mixing desk. Mm-hmm. And I was able to build like some of the effects, like the echoes and the reverbs. Mm-hmm. So I built. But I had to like save up and buy a machine mm-hmm. to record a voice, buy microphones and things like that. So it was a struggle. Mm-hmm. And then the first records, you know, um, nobody wanted to play them really because they thought they sounded strange. Mm-hmm. So it took a little time before we um, got it got it together, you know. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until the four um, the fourth the fourth record um, also that we started to get airplay, you know. One hundred point four FM, probably the best probably. in the whole of Africa. Back in the days, so the, uh, the, 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 the dub engineers 
revolutionized uh, reggae music uh, with, uh, with the coming of dub music, uh, if adding effects, uh, revives. Because the second generation of dub engineers, the likes of Matt Professor, Dennis Pavel uh, in, 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 in the UK, the likes of scientists, Jamis in Jamaica, you people, you revolutionized dub music. Well, um, it's not just dub music, but um, the way people recorded and the way people um, like use tracks, um, all that could be contributed to the clever use of multi-track. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, you could like the 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 use multiple use of the same rhythm track is due to the whole dub scene you know because once you could make a dub once you could have a track you have a song like you have this song playing in the background ready to learn mm -hmm. then you could give it to someone else and they could come up with a totally different mm -hmm. song you know if they spend time enough so mm -hmm. that is one you get different tracks you get the MCs mm -hmm. the whole birth of the MC and the whole growth of the MCs, the talkers, people like Sizzler, Maccabee, you know, Uroy, all those talkers, they would not have existed if it wasn't for the whole dub, dub scene. Mm -hmm. because, because you make dub, you're giving them a chance to work the rhythm and to expand on the rhythm. You know? mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this is important. Mm -hmm. So, um... It's been a lot of things that come out of the dub scene. And we, the producers, we had to really make full use of, of a rhythm track. Mm -hmm. Because prior to this, you make a record, like on a single, and you have the A side as one record. You turn it over on the B side, you have a next record. Mm -hmm. And those records would never be used again. Mm -hmm. Like if this song is called Wake Up, this mm -hmm. song is just for Wake Up. Mm -hmm. But we, the next generation, we learn, okay, wake up, strip it down. And first we have the dub up, <laughs> the dub version. Then we give it to someone who's smart, and they're going to make something totally different on top of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, this production plane is one of your uh, latest productions. Yeah, man. With, with Luciano. Now, the, 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 the present-day artists, how are they related to dub music? Well... Um, maybe everybody's connected, but they don't know. Mm -hmm. they, 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 you know, it's not so directed, mm -hmm. you know, you know, for them, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, like Luciano on this album, I give him some tracks. Some tracks he writes, some tracks we give him. To him. Mm -hmm. Like that one, Ready, Ready to Learn. He didn't write that. That's an old song mm -hmm. written by... Uh, soul singer called Barbara Mason mm -hmm. years ago it's from the 70s mm -hmm. and it's from a label called Arctic Version mm -hmm. you, know, you know Arctic label mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. yeah he actually came up came up with those lyrics you know mm -hmm. uh, you know you, you, so, sorry she came up with those lyrics and this was a big hit mm -hmm. then it was covered several times mm -hmm. in soul music it was covered several times in reggae you know, mm -hmm. you know it's it, it's immortal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. And for this song, we connect Lucci with a singer from London called Carol Thompson. Carol Thompson, yeah. She's like one of the queens of lovers rock. Mm -hmm. Lovers rock is a UK style of reggae, mm -hmm. but um, but it's um, romantic. You know, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just she just followed the footsteps of the likes of Janet K. Louisa Marx uh, and others. Well, yeah, she was there um, with them mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. Okay. Yeah, she, 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 but, but it's just that she maybe isn't as known mm -hmm. you know, as, as some them. of them. Mm -hmm. but, but no, Carol had some big hits in England, songs mm -hmm. like I'm So Sorry. Mm -hmm. and, you know, she's a. <laughs> she's not a foundation artist. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's get a taste of this dub. 100.4 right.
Yes, Gambia, this is the album called Deliverance by uh, Luciano, produced by Mad Professor Ariwa Records, and it's half vocals, half dub. Get used to it. It's the big man himself right now in the studios, Capital Radio 100.4, the sound of a new generation, and we are coming to you live from our studios on Cairo Avenue. You can also get us via the internet on www.capitalfm.gm. Mad Professor, yes, sir. you also worked uh, teamed up with uh, the legendary Lee Scratch Perry for the Mystic <laughs> Warrior. Yeah, man. Can you also tell us about that album? Because Lee Scratch Perry also is a foundation. Yeah, man. Well, Lee Perry is... Um, some people say he is the foundation mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, of reggae because um, like there was this book called People Funny Boy. It, mm-hmm. It's about... It's a semi-autobiography about Lee Perry. And interestingly, in this book, it shows that from 1961 to present day, you could say, Lee Perry has touched or has worked with about 90%, you could say, of people in the reggae business. Mm -hmm. Even though the guy is like 80 years old, Mm -hmm. he's worked with, from Cox and Dunn, Mm -hmm. Prince Buster, Byron Lee, mm-hmm. um, Bonnie Lee, mm-hmm. Observer, mm-hmm. Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most people mm-hmm. out of reggae in Jamaica has touched with Lee Perry. Mm-hmm. And outside Jamaica, quite a few reggae people has worked with Lee Perry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Adrian Sherwood, mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Dennis Buffell, mm-hmm. we have all worked with Lee Perry. Lee Perry is a genius, mm-hmm. you know. He's a mystic man. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like what you might say, he's like an Obia man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? A Maribu man. Maribu man, sitting. Yes, <laughs> he's a very powerful guy. Uh, you worked with this, with Chadi, you worked with Massive Attacks. You know, yeah. tell us something about uh, your other work outside reggae. Yeah, Be- well, because you know, I even understand you mix cumbia with you know dub. You know, you yeah, tremendous yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. South America. Well, you know, we just try to show that um, the whole reggae thing could be incorporated in in some other people. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, you know, in some other stands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. the whole reggae thing. Really, it could be mixed. Now, reggae is spread all around the world. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's all from this small island, Jamaica, but it's spread everywhere. Mm-hmm. You have reggae Germans mm-hmm. who play reggae every day, only reggae. Mm-hmm. French, mm-hmm. Belgium. Every week in Belgium is about five reggae shows, and Belgium is a small country. And in South America, Brazil, you got Brazilian bands, you know. Mm-hmm. Cidade Negra and um, mm-hmm. you know other groups in Brazil mm-hmm. playing playing reggae, you know, mm-hmm. Colombia, mm-hmm. Venezuela, mm-hmm. all over Argentina. Mm-hmm. Even at the festival, the last festival, we had some guys here from Argentina. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they come all the way because they love reggae and they love Africa and they're curious about Africa. Mm-hmm. So when they hear we keep in a festival, they come, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, reggae, uh, I've learned to mix with different people. Okay. This is what I'm saying, because looking at you work with the likes of Marcelo, a Brazilian, yes, and yes, Brazil, Marcelo. you know, they are known for samba, Colombia, they are known for cumbia. Yes. And I was made to understand also uh, Lover's Rock, the drum pattern is influenced by Afrobeat. Yes. You understand? Yes. So fusing all these genres together, because... Massive attacks, the hip hop, yes. and also you know, hip-hop. so all the fusing all these genres together, doing all these works around around the world. If I'm to ask you your experience now in music, reggae music, in general, global music. Well, um, it's a science. Mm-hmm. Music is a science. The reggae music is a particular science. Mm-hmm. It's a mystic thing because. Um, the early producers and artists of reggae had no idea it would become as big as it has become. Mm-hmm. They had no idea. They thought it would just remain a small thing in Africa, you know? 
in um, you know in Jamaica. But it's spread out. Spread from Jamaica to the other islands, you know, Barbados, Trinidad, Guyana, and then it spread to America, mm. spread to England. You know, the whole thing is really you wouldn't believe how big some songs are. Mm-hmm. Very big. The only problem now because of the problem with the download and the free and the freeness. Mm-hmm. You you know, maybe an artist wouldn't really understand what's going on because mm-hmm. the business around in the music business is not so clear lucrative. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it lucrative is. no more. No, no. Um. It's it, it's tricky. You could make it but it's tricky. Mm. Because you could have a track that is popular and is heard by by two million people and you never receive a penny from it. From you it. Know? Mm-hmm. Whereas um, if it was a fair business, and, and there, there are moves to make it proper and fair, mm-hmm. but if it was a fair business, this wouldn't happen. Business, this wouldn't happen. Business, 